This video is going to show you how to set up Logger Pro to help you analyze your data on your bungee drop activity. To begin with, let's talk about before we get the data. There are a couple buttons up here you need to be aware of if you're not aware of them already. Before you run any measurements, you need to make sure that you zero out your um, sensors. Make sure they know what zero is. There's a button at the top that says zero. You'll click on that and then it comes up. In this case, it says Go Link and it says Go Motion Detector. So we'll click on OK for both those. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not collecting data at the moment. And then when you collect data, you'll actually click on this green button up here and that'll start the collection process. Again, I'm not going to collect it because I've already got data. So the data on the screen is from a previous run I just did. And I can look at it and I've got three graphs. If I look at the position versus time graph, I can see that it's just a small section where I actually moved the force sensor to detect everything. So that tells me not to do the whole graph that's up there above it, but just the small section. So I'm not going to use the velocity of the position graphs. Next thing I need to do is delete them. Click on the velocity graph, press the delete button, click on the position graph, click on the delete button. On the force graph, I'll make that large so I can see everything on the screen. But I have another problem with this graph. This is force versus time, and what we want to do is we want to find the spring constant, so we need force versus distance. Fortunately, the Go Motion Detector recorded distance. So down here, I'm going to click where it says time, and I'm going to switch it to position. And that scale kind of funky on my graph, so I'll click on this icon up here. It looks like a capital A. That'll auto scale everything for me so it fills up my graph. That looks much better. Now what I do is I look at this and see what pieces of data do I really want. I can see I got all these squiggles at the end. That's where I was trying to hold still but wasn't doing a very good job. And at the very beginning, you can see I didn't start right away, so I got some squiggles there. So I'm going to collect data from the pieces in between. I'll use my cursor to highlight everything and go across, get a good chunk of my data before it gets all messed up. The more data you have that's accurate, the better your uh, best fit line is going to be. And then to find the best fit line now that I've identified the data, I'll click on this icon at the top. It looks like a little green line on top of the black line, and a little message pops up that says linear fit. So there it is. There's my linear fit. Next thing I'll do is double click on it, click on appearance, and I'm just doing this so you can actually see the data that's up here. On your computer, you can probably read it fine. So there you can see it's a 24 point font, so it's a lot bigger at this point. And when I look at this, I can find the slope, which is 4.45. Sorry, 4.557, and the units are newtons per meter, and that's what I want because that's what I want for my force constant for my elastic cord.